All right, this session is being recorded. It is 11 a.m. on May 26th, and this is the ACA um, team meeting. And today we're going to, this is our second meeting, but our first official meeting with everyone. And um, one of the things that we'd like to do first is just kind of get a look at um, what our agenda is for today, if you guys had some time to look at that. So let me share out my screen here. And we will take a quick look at this agenda. As we go through the agenda, um, let me know, are you guys able to see the agenda up there? Yep. Yes. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. Um, yes. So let's take a quick look at this. And the first thing I had up there is Doug's Pelocity. And I think I heard Doug's voice just a minute ago. Um, but um, the agenda for today is first, we want to make sure that we welcome the whole team um, because we missed some key players last week. So welcome everyone. And um, then the next thing is let's check out Pelocity, which has become um, maybe something a little bit bigger than we thought it might be. Uh, Doug sent me a super great email and said, look, uh, these objectives are kind of already done. I'd like to kind of dig into something else. And I said, you sort of need something about Pelocity. Would you mind going back to that? And he said, absolutely not. I'm on it. So it was really cool of him to do that. And Doug, if you're here, could you tell us where you are at that with that? Yeah, I had a call last week, and uh, <clears throat> we uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, Pelocity and where it should land within the ACA uh, modules. Um, and there is a section in there that refers to it currently. Um, and I don't know, has every, everybody had a chance to actually create an account and log in and see what that is about? as far as Pelocity goes. I don't want to go over something if everybody's got a good understanding of what it is. I have not heard from many people at all this past week. I'm going to okay. guess the answer is no. So okay. start us from um, ground zero. This okay, is Donna, but, and it was asking for a passcode. Do we have that? Yeah, you, if you if you go in and create an account, um, they'll they'll go ahead and open it up for you to do the assessment itself. Um, which oh, I it was asking me for thirty four dollars, so I might no, need to. No, you shouldn't shouldn't have to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's where I stopped. I, I can I can cool. um, reach out to um, um, Dr. Castleman and see if we can get some um, IDs. I know that I was able to log in and just um, ask for a password reset and I was able to get back in. So everybody on campus should have access to it and I'll find out um, why I asked you for a uh, subscription. But in any event, okay. um, it's a tool that the college is using to try to direct students through the use of uh, an assessment tool that kind of looks at, it's more like a psychological exam to be honest with you. It's, um, it's pretty tough to get through only because it's repetitive, um, and they do that based on uh, a lot of the algorithms that they've run in the past to, you know, figure out the best way to ask somebody a question um, to get the response um, instead of them just making it up. It, basically, they ask you a question over and over and over in different ways to see how you're going to answer it, and then they throw their logic in on the back end and, and make sense of it. So it's about 200 questions, and it does take – a couple of hours to complete if you're going to do it um, the way you should do it instead of like I did it, just pencil whip the thing and find out I should be a janitor in a you know a 7-Eleven or something. But um, the intent is for students to use this to direct them to a program so that they don't have to switch programs five, six, seven times in the uh, in the course of a college career and. Um, it's really a job placement tool as well because it tells you what your you know what you should be looking at for a college career based on you know what your interests are again based on the logic that they use and the algorithms that they have um, doing a psychological profile from your answers and then it feeds you into a database where the employers that are subscribed to the service can reach out to you even while you're in college and, and potentially offer you an internship or a scholarship or whatever it is that they want to do. So it's um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work for FTCC. Um, to me, it looked like a marketing tool and an employment tool for um, folks that 
you know, might already be in the job field and looking and employers that are looking to hire college graduates. So um, it again, it's it's pretty intensive, labor intensive to get through it. Um, but I think that it's probably um, it needs to be done early in the ACA programs. Um, you know, our goal ultimately, selfishly on my part, is to get it into the high schools so that we can direct the uh, students that are in either high school connections or graduating soon and coming to college uh, to a program that is more appropriate for them versus um, the student that says, well, I like automotive, but I got stuck in a paint class and I really want to learn how to build engines. Um, you know, we want to be able to catch that up front versus, you know, halfway through their first program and they decide to change um, and kind of go from that perspective. So, again, I'll, I'll reach out to Dr. Castleman and see if we can get access for everybody on the team here so they can go in and do it. And I think once you've had a chance to sit down, go through the uh, assessment, and you don't have to do it all in one sitting. You can break it up if you want. Um, and it will give you an idea of, of what the assessment tool is about. Uh, and I think you'll find very quickly um, you know, what the outcome can be from using it if, again, it's done properly. And you can always go back in and retake the assessment. Uh, again, if you pencil whip it like I did, I was part of a, you know, just a, a team that was supposed to get interested and see what this tool was about before we actually bought it. Um, so I wasn't truly interested in what the outcome was. So I just wanted to know how it worked. Um, that's not the way you're supposed to use it, though. So. Doug, was this released in the ACA classes this past semester? I don't know that they're using it yet because they're still working on, on rolling it out. So it, it potentially could have been, but I didn't get that um, information from, I think it was Melissa that I sp spoke with when, or I, Missy when I spoke I with I feel like it was. If not, they were using something very similar. My son just took the ACA class, and being the helicopter mm -hmm. mom in his college classes that I was, mm -hmm. I sat there and took all the assessments with them, and it sounds very similar to what he did because I have not attempted it. I was working on other things, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so do you still think that this is something that would only go into Module 5, and Module 5 is where it resides? Um, um, I, I think we could, it, I guess it doesn't, I think it would make more sense if it was on the front end, but um, the thing I would be concerned about, and I, similar to some of the concerns I have about my intro classes here is, is having something that is that labor intensive that turns a student off. Um, you know, a lot of people, I mean, I, I know how I learn, and it's not from sitting down and doing assessments and reading books. Um, you know, there may be students that we lose if we dump them right into that assessment right off the bat versus, you know, bringing them in slowly. And I would almost like to see that cut up into different modules, which might make more sense. Um, because at the end of the ACA, let's say ACA 120, they could take, and I think that's where it is now, they could take sections of that assessment throughout those modules um, so that they're not sitting down for two hours doing an assessment. Um, um, I, I feel like that is exactly what Tanner did, and he was frustrated, yeah. which is why I had to stand over him and say, just click. Just yeah. click, just click your way through it. It's just going to, he's like, it just tells me the same thing it already told me. I'm going to yeah. be an engineer, whatever, you know, but yep. okay. It sounds exactly like uh, the ACA. So, uh, you know, it is frustrating because you get, it, and it may not be just four questions. It may be 10 or 12 questions that ask you the same thing over and over and over. And there's really no um, direction as to how to complete it. Like you, you go through it and you almost, feel like you're contradicting yourself because it doesn't tell you that, you know, I just answered four questions. It's okay. Of the four answers you just gave, which one is, you know, your higher priority or anything like it? It just asks you the question again, but it asks you to answer in only three or two answers and it gives you the same choices. So now you feel like, yeah, it kind of makes you feel like you're cheating the system or something. So um, I, I don't know if that was their intention, but that's the way it felt when I took it. What if we, Doug, um, like as an assignment piece in each of the modules, 
like module one. So our assignments are a quiz, a discussion board, and log into Pulosity. Module mm -hmm. two, written assignment, discussion board, first assessment on Pulosity, something like that, and just break down so then when they get to module five it could be kind of like the gusto of it would that be something that you think might be appropriate yeah I, and, and I'll, so I'll is there a way to break it, it down well that's what i was just going to say i'll go back in and look at it because it, you may have to break it down by number of questions i don't believe it's it's built in from what i recall it's not first assessment second assessment it's just uh one dump and go through the whole thing so I think it is laid out in numbers of questions, and oh. probably the better way to do it would be to say, you know, question one through 50 or whatever makes sense for breaking it up um, in that point. But I can review that again today. I'll, I'll take a look and um, see the best way to break that down because I do think the way to do it is smaller chunks within each individual module rather than in one sitting or, you know, all right, the only thing you have for module five is just this. I, I don't think you'll you, you'll have some unintended consequences there. And that's one of the big ones that we've got to make sure that we cover because that content is used for other things for the school. So um, is anyone opposed to the thought process if if Doug finds a way where it can be broken up that we add a small velocity piece and you know modules one two three four and then five kind of hits at home and they finish it out in five. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I remember even doing diagnostic testing for the admissions office at another school, and even those tests were intensive. We would break down reading um, um, English diagnostic tests and the math on another day. So I can't imagine 200 questions in one sitting. Yeah, and I do. Rem I'm pretty sure that's what Tanner did, and I was like, just click the button, just go. <laughs> so. well, at least he got to be an engineer. I'm a janitor, so. <laughs> You must not have read the questions. <laughs> I think I read them once. Them. And I just blew through it. I'm like, this is. Uh, thankfully, it was a demo, but uh, apparently, I don't feel so bad because uh, Dean Gibson was supposed to be, I don't know, some high school marm or something. I'm not sure, but <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't the dean of a college, so. Cool deal. Okay, awesome. Thank you for doing that, Doug. Um, no problem. We also agreed to take one last view of the Google documents to see if any of those would be resources for us or something that would go into the class. I peeked in a couple more of them. They all seemed like resources to me. Did anyone find anything different? I found the resources myself. This is Marie. Hi, Marie. Hi. Uh, uh, interesting stuff that I can use in my classroom, but I don't think in this particular one. Awesome. So we will not worry about the Google Docs anymore. We have kind of taken a look at that, so we're good. All right. So, um, Rondell, I'm kind of ready for some intros, if we're ready to start kind of doing that. So I'm going to kind of jump into the class and show you all what I have if you haven't been in there yet. Um, my son calls it the mini human class. So we should still be sharing our screen. Let me see here. Let me go into the class. I thought I had it up. I must have clicked out of it. Let's see here. All right. I added so many humans in there. I thought it made it more appealing, sort of-ish. So, okay. Um, so, can you guys see the ACA 120 class right now, the one that we're building? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So, um, it's got the welcome in there, and I looked at the, the welcome announcement that was on the last one, and I wondered where they got this statement here, this course provides information and strategies, and guess what? So I looked up the course description at the school, and that is actually the course description from the school. So that's what it says. That is the um, course description there. So I, I, I left that in there, um, and then if anyone sees anything um, with these announcements that need to be addressed. I retyped them and reposted them in there. Um, and anything, of course, that needs to be updated will be in the red for the template. Um, also, there was an announcement on the last one that said there is no book, so I made sure to put that in there. Um, I am not the best wordsmith. If you look at the, the words that are down here and you say, course doesn't have required textbook, 
all the materials you need are included in the course modules. If you're kind of like, I think it should say this, I have no problem with that. You can change it yourself because you're also in the class. It will not hurt my feelings. I am, I just, I put it in there because I feel like it needs to be there. However, it doesn't mean I'm a wordsmith and that I come up with some wonderful stuff. So, or you can email me and say, hey, will you change this? So either way, either way. So we've got some announcements that are put in there. Um, the how this course works um, template that that was imported in there. You guys realize our main announcement guides them to the how this course works. I don't in my courses I take that out because I don't think it makes sense but there must be a reason for it so I want to follow the template exactly so I put here please view the content under this button to learn the mechanics of how this course works to start the class, click on the assignments button. So if you don't agree with that, um, you know, let me know. I'll be happy to adjust anything. I was just trying to make some progress in the course. Um, the syllabus I have not touched yet because I want to um, get some other content into the course first. Instructor information hasn't been touched. So let's take a look at the assignments. So under the assignments, module one, I left it with just the basic information that's on our guide. And it specifically says in there, module one is college policies and procedures. If we feel like that needs to have more of a description for, mo for module one, um, let me know. Or you can start yelling right now. Tell me what to change it to. I'll be happy to make adjustments. Um, like I said, I was just trying to get us to make some kind of a progress. All right, so this introduction was copied from the other introduction, from the other class. And I'm not huge on grammar, but I feel like it needs to be updated. I know Rondell was going to be working on that. So um, Rondell, if you have a, um, some content that you're ready. So I had that as the number three item. I'm ready for any content intros. Um, or module intros, any of those that you have and you want put in there, I'd be happy to start putting those in. Um, All right, but I, knew I will go ahead. I'll go ahead and start working on those. I was kind of waiting for people to start putting in assignments and stuff so that I would be able to um, kind of pinpoint what I was going to say, but I can go through and start working, pulling those together. Yeah, I think if you use, I think we're going to follow this guide really close because that was our. Um, it, this is pretty set in stone. I realized um, after discussing with some of the deans and stuff that what they have is really exactly what they want. They just want us to put it together. So, gotcha. um, so if you use that guide that's on there, and if you want to send that to me or type it in yourself, I am super cool with that. I'm going to um, put it on a Word document, Tori, My, okay. and I'm just going to list them: Module One Intro, Module Two Intro, da da da, um, gotcha. and then and then you can do with them what you want. Awesome. Also, if you want to change those, um, if you want to change the module description as well, if yeah. you feel like that needs an update, and then the introduction to the modules, that's cool. Um, if you guys think these weird little humans are too much, I can certainly take them out. I just made them last night because I thought, I don't know. Totally awesome. Awesome. I honestly think that um, every course needs some visual interest. Um, I think that sometimes if we're just too text heavy or if there's just text, sometimes our students' eyes glaze over and they tend to ignore the text on the page. Um, I think that the inclusion of visual images sort of focus the eyes and sort of make them pay attention. Okay. Well, that's cool. If there's someone and you don't feel like speaking up, just send me an email. It's not going to hurt my feelings, I promise you. They took about three minutes to create them. I go to a site and pull a human and put some text in there. So um, what I did, though, is I pulled over that intro. So Rondell's going to work on that. Um, for the module assignment summary, I just put the SAP and plagiarism discussion and a quiz. So what happened is, in the meantime, we have an email from Takara. And let's see here. And she sent us some super cool stuff. So she sent us um, an academic integrity assignment. 
which could be used as a discussion board. And I sent this to Donna because Donna's working with discussion boards. And um, I think Donna said that this was thumbs up. Um, is that true, Donna? Were you checking with? Um, I was asking because I'd seen some reference to scenarios for the discussion one module forum, um, but Cindy didn't have any. So okay. um, I was just going to see what they had, but apparently that was maybe in an old course and they just referenced the scenarios. Um, but yeah, that looks another great. Sends me um, another email. I think I'm going to blow my head off in here. Oh my gosh. Stop sending it. Stop talking to me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's the first day of classes my emails blowed up too <laughs> I'm sitting in the office like oh my gosh really can you stop sending me emails stop <laughs> um, you are recording this right I, yeah. I, well I had to vent I'm so sorry it just came out I just had to vent <laughs> I'm going to mute now but I had to just blow <laughs> Girl, it is okay. We all feel the same way. I have I make my students reply to an email on the first day, so my email is all blown up today. So, all right. So, as it's real. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're cool with this as our first. Does anyone um, disagree that this would not be a great discussion board for the first um, module? So what we'll do is we'll post it in there and we'll give you guys until next week, like after we get done. So hopefully we can kind of seal out module one today and then um, we'll ask everyone to look over it. I'll post in there everything by tonight. And then next week, anything that needs to be updated or double checked or whatever, we'll come back and, and check that. Is that cool? Sounds good. Rondell also, I mean, not Rondell, um, Kara also sent me a link for um, financial aid, SAP and financial aid. And so I put that in under a resource. And um, this GPA calculator was already a resource from the previous course. And so wasn't this link here, which was plagiarism. No, this came from Takara. Thank you. Came from Takara. So we have three resources in there, which would be is only the is the only base content we have. So basically we go from introduction to listing the assignments to a GPA calculator, which I don't know that that would make a whole lot of sense unless somewhere in the introduction it explains why I'm using a GPA calculator. And maybe somewhere in the introduction, why it would explain why I'm going to look at these links. So, Rondell, maybe when you do that introduction, you could say you're going to be using the GPA calculator and looking at links in the module or something like that. So they have sort of an explanation. Because if not, it doesn't really make sense. I'm like, okay, that's a resource. Well, I'm not clicking on that yet because I don't know that I need it. So, I think we need some. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't. It's hard to. I don't want to speak over anybody. I don't know that I heard anyone else. Okay, maybe I'm just hearing ghosts in the house. I haven't had my coffee yet, so my brain's not firing. Um, <coughs> I think um the GPA. I've had the same thought, but I know that the SAP is like a big deal, and our students need to have a resource to read about SAP. So um, I know that we have the information on the financial aid page, um, but I do, I'm trying, it's sort of, the way they have it set up, it's sort of embedded. Like the SAP information is in, I saw it in two places. It's in the student handbook. So we definitely need to have a resource that tells the students, go to the student handbook and read these highlighted sections. Well, really you're supposed to read the whole thing, I guess, or skim it, but these are the sections you need to look at for this module. Because I get what you're saying to where it looks like it doesn't fit, but it does because GPA is a huge import, uh, part of SAP. You know, you have to oh, maybe um, maybe all we need to do is put a statement with it with like, you know, resource GPA calculator. Click on this link and, you know, check out your GPA and give a small set of instructions. 
Yes, and also that's why I put it in the, the um, scenario so that they have a reason to use the GPA calculator. So it actually oh, because the discussion knowledge. board uses it? Gotcha. Yes, that's the direction to refer back to your resource because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just sitting there, that we had a reason to use it. Okay, so, so if nothing else, we could put a statement there that says, you know, ch check it out and it'll be used in your discussion board or something. This way it doesn't feel like it's just kind of hanging. Yeah, because um, okay. I made sure I made reference to it and said where it would be because I wanted um, all the assignments to sort of tie, uh, tie okay. everything together. I missed that. I'm sorry. Um, okay. What I about yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> what about these links that are here? Was that referenced in there also? Okay, or so was the, that the attendance. Okay, so the two things that I sent um, covers everything that they said they wanted covered in the module. The first thing was the GPA, the attendance policy, SAP, and academic integrity. So to cover SAP and the attendance policy, I created a quiz. So they're going yep. to need to look at the resources to be able to answer the questions on the quiz. And then the, the I've loaded the quiz board. here. Do do we want to take a look at it? I you sent it to me this morning. I created the quiz already. Oh wow. So the quiz is in there. Yeah. The quiz is in there. I started it. Um it has 15 questions, combination, multiple choice, true and false, with no time limit. They can attempt it three times, is what I put, if you guys are okay, okay. with that. And these are the questions that she had. What does SAP stand for? I'm just going to go in. Maybe I'll end up a janitor. <laughs> I'm just going to put in some answers in here. But if you guys will take the time to sort of check this out um, and make sure that it works well for you and that it's accurate. Um, I did not have it release any of the... Um, I did not have it release any of the answers, but I did make it where they could attempt it three times. Okay. And also, I'm looking at one where it says missing a certain percentage of the work. I made I uh, made sure that when I created the test, I um I was looking at all the resources when I wrote it, and I wanted to make sure that it is clear and not super confusing. So, like, for example, question 10. Let me go back. Question 10. One of the answers is not supposed to be 10%. And the reason why the question, the numbers I had were 20, 15, 25, and 5. And the reason why I left 10% out is because technically, if you miss 10% of a developmental course, you can be you can be dropped. But the basic, the general policy is 20% for any portion of a course. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a thing where they would actually right. get the wrong answer because they were looking for, because technically, the, because I could see where somebody could get confused. They might choose 10% because in the, the student handbook, it says 10%, you can't miss more than 10% of a developmental course. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's, that's why right. I didn't have 10% as an option because I didn't want them to fall into that trap. I wanted to make sure that they'd be very clear about what, I, what we were looking for. And you know and what? That's one of the few that I even changed. And I only changed it so it went in order, but I, I should have done exactly what you said. So well, I just to, yeah, that's the only reason why it's a big deal because I don't want to confuse our students because because I can see somebody getting confused um, on that one. But I wanted to make it to where they actually have to read it because they answer the question some the question like that you have to actually read the policy you can't just skim. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You know what? That's I, I went exactly and added all the other ones in, but when I got to that one and I started adding it, I just went 10, 15, 20, 25. So I will not do that again. Tell me what you had in there initially so I don't have to pull that file back up. Uh, it was 20, 25, uh, 20, uh, 15, 25, 5, 5, 5. In any, any order is fine, the answer is 20, of course. Okay. And what do I need to mark the answer as now? 20. Sure. 20%? Mm -hmm. Now you know my secret story. I have no life. I stand in the middle of the night and make tests. 
based on this. No, she sent me this at three, at like three a.m. this morning. I was like, okay. Coronavirus. I can't sleep, man. I can't sleep. That's crazy. All right. That's interesting. Of course, the one that I did change because I just start that one. I did copy and paste and clear everything out. I just typed it in. I was like, I'm just going to type this in really quick. So I won't do that again. I'll go exactly by your stuff because I'm sure it's got a reason. So, um, all right. So maybe under these resources, we just need a statement that says this resource will be used for discussion board. This resource will be used for the discussion board and the quiz. And this resource will be used for like the discussion board. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And, I'll and then if I need to send anything to somebody for content, I'll send some, you know, um, I know we have someone working on content. I just want to get names right because I mess names up all the time. Uh, but if anything, you see anything missing, any content that goes along with an assignment, um, let me know because I've got like a million things open and um, I want to make sure that we're as thorough as possible because the worst thing is having an assignment and you don't have what you need to complete the assignment in the class. So then um, I have the discussion board listed here. Um, do we want to link that discussion board or does it matter to anyone? Um, I typically don't release all of it in the, dis in the module. Um, I have a tendency to release it in the discussion board itself um, because they won't remember once they click from here over, but I also can link it. If anyone, um, does anyone have a preference on how that's released? Okay. Corey, this is Donna. I'll like the link for that. My preference. I'll go with whatever the team wants to do. You like to have it linked in. The reason why I never used to link it is because once you linked it, they missed the content. But now they've updated that. So Correct. I'll link. I'll link it over. I'll link it over. That just eliminates them having to go to another place. Yeah. Okay. I'll link that over. Um, and then we have this SAP quiz that. Um, is posted in here and then of course you know the bottom just double check yourself did you complete your discussion and your SAP quiz um, so I can go back in and make adjustments to that based off of the discussion board and things that we talked about does anyone else have anything that they feel like needs to be added in there for that to be a complete module If we look at the course outcome, it says that we need to identify the essential college policies and procedures, include academic integrity, plagiarism, calculating the GPA. I think you guys did a great job of wrapping that all together. Um, the one thing that I did have a question about is this link right here that you sent me. It goes to um, playlist that I wasn't familiar with. Okay, so what that is, first of all, I want to say that, Tori, in my middle of the night work, I did not, I don't feel like I sent you all the content because technically there should be something directing the students to the student handbook because all the information is in the student handbook as well. Um, I just. Um, uh, is this it right here? I think there was, oh, that's just, I don't know if this guides them to. Does that take you to the, sometimes our website confuses me a little bit, so I'm trying to make sure. Well, and the unfortunate thing is, too, is I heard somebody mention that they want to maybe try to make an update to some of the website, too. So okay. this will lead to the student handbook here. However, maybe we need to give a specific well, statement. Um, Can we go directly there to, to the handbook? Yeah. We sure can. Or can we download it? Is it going to give us that option? Let's see. We can actually download the student handbook and put it in there. That's perfect. Okay. All right. So if I go in and make that adjustment, then that means module one is going to be pretty much complete unless at that point, Doug, we decide to add like the um, Pelocity in there and have them go ahead and create their account or something like that just to get them started. Right. Yep. So, if I finish this first module out tonight, um, would you guys be willing and able to um, review it for this week and bring back any adjustments, changes, additions, hopefully before next week? Um, I got a lot of emails this morning, but I was up early and I worked with all of them and I was able to get them in there, but that may not be the standard for every Tuesday morning. 
So the quicker you can get it to me, the better. Is that cool? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can definitely work with the QD assignments uh, faster. Uh, just kind of classes started think, today. Yeah, yeah I know. I was hit pretty hard the last two days. I didn't think my classes were going to make it at the last minute. They they allowed them to go, so I was oh. very thankful. Good. So um, this discussion board rubric, um, throughout this past week, no one else sent a discussion board rubric to Donna. Is that correct, Donna? I did not receive any. So do you guys feel comfortable using this as our discussion board rubric? Okay, so Donna, if you want to use the template that we have um, for discussion boards, um, I know like I use them in my class. Let's see if they're used in here. If not, we can always go to, Oh, I thought there was like a more in-depth, I know in our class I have it, um, maybe this is not the standard anymore. You have the assignment and then you do this and then grading and you add post and reply. Um, I don't know if you guys are using the template like that. That might be the old template. Uh, let me take a look in here. I think that's the old template. Is it? I think Let's the new one does not have all the requirements, but I think it might be good to add some things in there since this is some of their first time using discussion forum. I noticed that when I used the template for the test, there were a lot less requirements in there than there have been in the past. Oh, here we go. The discussion assignment, the grading criteria, resources, and to submit. So Donna, if you'll format that discussion board in that way and add yeah. it in or ship it off to me and I'll do it either way and we'll get that first discussion board posted in there. Um, once you get that, let me know and I can import the rubric and then after it's imported, you can just keep using the rubric, but you can't import a rubric until there's a discussion board posted. So, all right. Looks like we're making some progress, guys. Um, all right, so Takara, as soon as you've got ideas, you can just hit them up to any of us. You know, just send out an email to all of us that says, I kind of had this thought process. Um, what are you guys thinking? And don't feel like you have to do all of the work for those because um, Dinah is also working on assignments. So make sure you work with her and, and um, you know, maybe if you have a structure or a thought and Dinah doesn't have one, make sure you work with her and say, look, I, I have this thought, but I, I, I'm going to work on something else. Will you work on it? You know, just figure it out as a team. This way we feel like we're including everybody. I know Dinah took off last week because it was her vacation, but we're about to pull her back in with us. How about that? Yes, yes and I did appreciate the week off. <laughs> I bet. I know. <laughs> and, and Marie is going to be working on the base content. So, Marie, once we load out this first module, and say please review it that's where I'd really like for you to step in and say this grammar is not right this isn't consistent this doesn't work well and this way if we get the first module done we copy it over to the second module it'll be easy for us to stick with consistency and stuff okay I will do that so um, the other thing I wanted to mention is Dr. Searles wanted to add security into the course and um, you know, we can find a module that would be best to place the the security in there. Um, does anyone have a, a specific plan on where they think it needs to go? It needs to be in both of them. So module eight covers college policies and procedures. Module two is college resources. Three is financial literacy. Four is study skills. Five is goal setting. And eight is strategic plan. So couldn't it go under the resources? Um, college resources for module two? Yeah. 
so that they can okay. get it on the front end instead of the back end. All right. Does anyone have a problem with putting the security into module two with college resources? Um, I did check with Barbara to see if the school already had college resources for security. So it's kind of interesting you picked that module. Um, they have only things for employees, nothing that could get farmed out to the students. Um, but I did share with you guys the link that I use for some security things. Um, did anyone take the time to look at that link? Yes, I thought it was a very good link. Lots of good information, pretty basic. They have, this is the Goodwill Community Foundation site. Um, I have gotten written permission from them to use content from their um, website into our basic CIS 113 class. And this way, CIS 113 is basically the GCF site, slightly reworked. Um, and they complete the tasks from here. So that's why I got written permission from them to use this. They were happy to let us use it. And then our CIS 113 class does not use a book. Um, it's book free. But there is a part in here that goes through security. Maybe it's online safety. I forget. I sent the link out. Um, how do you guys want that release, though? It, it probably needs to be some kind of a, a discussion or a um, some kind of an assessment that goes along with it. Did everyone just get quiet or did we lose everybody? We thought we got cut off. <laughs> I know, right? I, I, figured if I, got, I figured if I got quiet, somebody would talk. What do you think? I was in the chat, because, um, but I was thinking for, when I heard internet security on the email, I thought about the security awareness thing that we did. That was really simple, really short. Um, it's very basic. And um, of course, we've done several of those um, over the years. It'd be really easy to adapt something like that for our students. Something simple, maybe four to five questions after like a small little, they do a resource or a video. Gotcha. Um, that would knock it out. So what just do, do a little quiz from it? Yeah, but something really short, like no more than maybe five questions. No, it doesn't need to be long. It doesn't have to be big. I'm cool with that. Okay, so um, Dinah, would you, if I make sure to get the correct link to you, because I'm not sure which one it is here, one of these goes over computer security. It's not internet safety, I don't think. Um, I don't think it's that one. There's one that's, that was specifically, oh yeah, it is this one. Um, creating strong passwords, your browser security features, um, introduction to internet safety. It breaks it down. It's got like these couple little chapters in here, but it kind of gives you an idea. And it has a nice little video that they could watch if they wanted to. Um, Dinah, are you opposed to going through this content and, and coming up with about five questions from here? Absolutely, no problem. So we'll ask them to um, look at chapters one through five. I don't know okay. if they need online shopping, but um, they might decide they want, you know, more of it. Or we could just say, look, go to this link here because this link will take it. I will tell you there already is an Internet safety quiz at the end of it. And okay. I know this because I use it with my 113 class. And... Um, what we could do is have them take the quiz at the end, which is 10 questions, and submit a screen clipping. But that might be too much. So you guys right. tell me. It's, it's probably better if we build the quiz inside of Blackboard just for ease. 
Okay. If you want to use the questions that are posted there, I've already gone through that. They keep it pretty basic. But okay. if you send me the quiz that you want placed in there, I will not change it. <laughs> okay. I will not change the answers. I okay, only cool. changed a couple of answers on the other ones, and of course I changed the wrong ones because I got too lazy. I was trying to hurry. So Okay. okay. So you just have five questions. Yeah. Do you need this link again? Um, Tori, I put it in the chat. You did? Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. From your email. I can't see the chat when I've shared out the screen, so thank you so much. All right. Well, I think I think we kind of have a plan for next week. I'll go through and, and adjust that discussion board. Um, we'll keep working um, with the um, – I'm going to stop sharing this. Uh, let me go back to this just to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Um, June 30 is our completion date, our basic breakdown. Um, wait a minute. Did we? Did anybody in here hear anything more about this iGrad thing or just that email where I sent you guys the invite and it went on every single week because I did it wrong? <laughs> That was the only thing I saw. In it. Yeah, so I guess they're just going to tell us, well, you can come to this session and learn about it. So uh, when we get to module three, the iGrad thing, I guess, will be kind of slim. Um, when we report back next week, so um, Doug, you're going to have maybe a set of instructions for us on um, how to log into Pelocity and the, the thought process that we could put that, that introduction to Pelocity, what it is, how to log in into the first module. Yeah, and if, if, if everybody that's on the call can just send me their um, their employee ID number, I'm not sure they'll ask me for it, but I'd rather Just in case. There. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we do have these meta majors to dig into at some point. Um, what module does that fall under? Does anyone have that memorized? Is that module five, I think? Uh, with the career fields and the meta majors, yeah. So we'll hit that up a little bit more in module five. I think it's actually six, isn't it? Six. Yeah. Um. It. Well, is, just, it so, is it six? So five is velocity and six is the meta majors. Okay. All right. Well, we're not. We haven't quite hit them yet, so I guess we don't have to. Um, I need to go back and see. Does anyone remember what that was in reference to? Now I've forgotten. What did those meta majors get lined up with? I thought it was going with Pelocity and the careers because is isn't, that the, meta, isn't the results from Pelocity supposed to align with the your um, desired or your um, ideal meta major, right? Isn't this right. supposed to bring you toward your meta major area? Right. Yeah, and six, and, six and seven are different in both classes. So I think it does hit up in five with the velocity. So one thing I will say, you guys, is in looking at the the final structure, the one that's kind of scribbled on that they they completed, um, yes. it is very comprehensive, which is great. But I'm not going to lie, as one of the people that's looking at assignments, it's very heavy um, with regard to course outcomes. Um, some of these modules are pretty big. Um, and I think that that's something that I'm coming from a teacher perspective. I think that it's going to be uh, a little bit challenging to make sure that this is not so work heavy for a one credit hour class. I mean, um, in order to in order to hit the course outcomes, you know, as they say, you know, you could skim it and, and kind of, you know, do some little quick stuff. But if you really want to do it the way that it looks like they want it done, I don't know. Of course, you know, of course we can do it. I just wanted to sort of express that and get someone else's feedback. Like, is that just me? Am I overthinking it? Or I, I think it's right now. I think right now we're kind of okay. I think for module one, I think we're hitting the mark. If oh, we yeah. keep I, I, I think for module one, we're great. I'm looking at all the others because, like, um, 
and I'm not trying to full steam ahead. I just like to have ideas in advance, especially. Oh, no, that's good. Being a teacher, I kind of wanted to knock out some ideas and have some stuff to throw out. I really wanted to have more than one module done um, for, for feedback by today because I'm trying to work quickly so that you have enough time to give feedback and decide because if I take too long, you won't have, you guys won't have time to weigh in um, and Dina either. You know, um, is, I'm saying, I'm not saying your name. I don't want to say your name incorrectly. Oh my goodness. That's okay. It's Dinah. Dinah. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. So that's my only concern. Look, I'm just looking forward as we look, they're starting to stack. Like for example, mod two, I'm looking at that. Um, I have an idea, but at first, um, this morning, I was getting a little bit um, confused because there's so many resources. And of course, they only say identify, but it's a lot to identify. And I, um, I wanted to uh, propose an idea um, to see what you guys thought, but I, I could always just talk uh, to Dinah and sort of see what we can pull together and then present. But it's a lot of stuff to cover. You're talking about looking at financial aid, advising, registration, tutoring, the library, computer labs, all clubs, counseling services. Um, plus, they have these scenarios and discussion boards that they want, and they have numbers beside them. So I'm wondering, does that mean, like, for example, under Mod 2, the discussion board has two parentheses. Does that mean that they want two discussion boards? Are they just saying that's the second assignment? I think it's linking. Um the okay so, it's, so that discussion board is linked to a module objective number two okay thank god all right so <laughs> um, so my my idea was to sort of create you know how we were talking about as a group we're talking about the scavenger hunt for the orientation i was thinking maybe we should move the scavenger hunt idea to module two that way we have something for them to do to kind of hop to each section like, for example, the first link I sent you for financial aid was to something called financial aid TV that Fable Tech has. So there's actually a financial aid TV video on budgeting. And if they watch this part of that video for module two to uh, maybe to check that box, they'll be ready for module three, which is financial literacy. So you see we're sort of building on those blocks. Um, if we told them so and so needs a tutor in chemistry, where do you go? that would make them go to the learning center and have to look at the tutoring list and identify Brenda Harris who tutors in chemistry and another subject. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense at all? It does. We have to be careful because some of these will be online classes though. So as long well, as it's... Everything that I'm talking about is online links. This is stuff that gotcha. you can do okay. online yep. face to face. But it took a lot of work having to go find everything um, but if the students can do it, if they can go find these things, it makes it so they actually have to seek out the resources, know where they are, and apply to be able to uh, answer the question or fill in the blank. So it's sort of like, uh, like for example, the one about a tutor, it just be like a sentence. Uh, Sam needs a chemistry tutor. Where does he go? Or who, um, find him a tutor. They have to go click the link to the learning center where there's a tutor list, and they have... Um, they have a list of each tutor, their professional name, their tutoring areas, and they choose somebody. And that would be Brenda Harris for chemistry. She's the only chemistry tutor. So that way you know for sure that they've already went to the resource, they've looked at the learning center. That covers tutoring. Um, advising, there's a pre-advising survey that's really short. Ask them to complete that and send a screenshot or um, something from that. That way you know that they've done it. But it's still, it, it's going to be a decent amount of work to pull it together because they have to go to all these different places to be able to identify these resources. So that's all, all I'm saying is that I think the people that pulled this together did a good job, but it's still a lot of information for one credit. Like a lot. A lot. I mean, we can always just release the resources. I mean and focus on the ones we think are the most important. Yeah. And I've talked to some friends of mine uh, in my department about it that took ACA just sort of to know what our students go through. And one of the complaints that I received was that um, he didn't feel like, he felt like there were a lot of places where you just sort of mark that you did something, like you click that you read it, instead of being able to interact with the information. And I told him that that was good for us to know 
because I think that we're going to be able to create a class that's uh, really engaging for students. But I told them that was good feedback because I've never taken ACA at Double Tech, so I don't even know what it looks like. I was. Gonna, you know um, what they used to do is they used to go on group tours. And that, I don't know, that might have been before you started working here, but they used to go on group tours and you would see them going through campus. Oh, that must be the ACA class because they would take them, physically take them to the locations. That's awesome. I've seen some other schools do that too and it's helpful because they actually get to put their eyes on these different places and know where to find them when they need them. I mean, we do have like adaptive release in the class. It could be that... Um, you know, we could use some kind of adaptive release unless that's going to get too complicated. If we could come up with some way to use something like that so that we could have them, you know, make sure that they look at the resources first or something and then it releases the assessment. I mean, I don't know. That's an idea, too. I didn't even think about that. Like, you must complete this before you're able to open this to do this. That's something to look at. Um, I'm definitely going to have to um, have some virtual time. <laughs> Dinah and I to chat it out, but um, and I'm sorry to you know talk so much. I just want to make sure that I have a good idea of, of in my brain of what we want, um, so that when we come up with ideas together, that they're good and that you know we can sort of revise. You could them. release you could release the resources and have like a quiz, say just one question that says you know I have read and understood the resources or something like that, and then once they pass that, it releases them to their next part of the assessment. I don't know. Those are good ideas. I just, you know, you know how it is, because we're teachers. We want to make sure that we're actually covering objectives that they're going to learn and actually yeah. get. Okay. All right. So check this out. This is the things that I have for us to um, check out this week. Dodd is going to ask us to send him our ID numbers for school. He's going to double check for passcodes so that we can go into that. And we're asking if you could please, please um, try to get into Pulocity so you can get that experience for it. Um, also, while you go through Pulocity, see if it's something that you guys think and give Doug some feedback. Um, you know, could we break this up into modules one through five? Is this something that could happen? So please try to log into Pulocity this week and give feedback on that. Super important for the school because the school uses that for multiple things. Um, also, I'll have all the information for the, for the um, module one by tonight. Um, if you could review that and get any feedback back to me as soon as possible because next week we want to move on to module two and keep on trucking along um, if not we're not going to make our goal so module one will be due tonight will be done tonight I'll send you out an email please review module one and um, send me back any information any content there's a couple of links in there and I think we'd hit up one of those links and um, and uh, we need to look at it because that's the one that says um, there's a playlist. One of the links in module one released me out to that playlist, and I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but it's going to car with me. So that was the financial aid thing. And what we could do is um, that was just the playlist for um, because one of the playlists is SAP. So there's a SAP playlist that has eight videos related to SAP, so that they can view those sort of at their leisure in in um, sort of with the information that's in the handbook, because I wanted them to have both. There's the information that's in the handbook, and then Fayetteville Tech has an SAP playlist as a part of their um, financial aid. Okay, so that is the what you intended to send me. Okay. Yes. Um, also, I have the, the handbook downloaded. I'll load that up in there, too, as a resource. So module want to be done tonight. I'll send you all an email. Check it out. Um, Donna, if you could get that, um, if you could get that discussion board to me, how you want it and I'll get that in there today too and then we'll go ahead and start getting our stuff together for module two send your stuff for module two we'll get that in and have you guys check out Pulocity is that cool yes yeah, sounds great Works for me yep. sounds good okay I'm gonna give you guys a minute to talk because I, I need to see what questions you have what you think we need because I talk a lot <laughs> so my question is um, I'm going in and I'm going to look at um, the first five modules and work on intros, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's all I needed to know. I'm easy. 
I'm, I'm all except for when I'm yelling at everybody. Else. <laughs> I was just gonna say that, but then I thought, well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> just, just except when I'm yelling in my office at you know people. <laughs> I made my morning. Well, we're all human. We all say stuff like that, so. All right. Well, and we had the whole group here today, which is super cool. So, all right. Anyone else want to add anything? Are we good? All set. All good. Awesome. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. I'll send that out in case anyone needs to look at it. Um, and we're good to go. All right. Thanks, See y'all next week. Thank you for Thank your hard you, work. Tori. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Have a See great you later. Week, everybody. Thank you. All right.